So Politicon is coming up in less than a week now. And we have found out that Ann Coulter had backed out of the debate with Kyle Kalinske. And so therefore, uh, Kyle had to go through a process of essentially proposing a bunch of different people to debate. He proposed uh, a bunch of different debates with a bunch of different conservatives. The, the <clears throat> most notable people uh, that we all wanted to see was he offered to debate Ben Shapiro, he offered to debate Tommy Lahren, and he offered to debate Candace Owens, one of you on all three of them, one of you on uh, every single one of them passed. Uh, now it's just, I wanted to highlight this because here, here's something interesting. So, so far, I want to add this too. so far to our knowledge, according to the Politicon website, uh, Ben Shapiro is only going to be there on the Sunday and he's not actually doing a single debate. He's just giving a speech and then doing a Q and a with his daily wire lackeys. So <clears throat> there's not actually a debate going on with Ben Shapiro and someone else, but uh, I want to remind you guys this because I think this is significant because of how he passed on a debate with Kyle Kalinske upon it being offered. So I'm sure you guys recall, I mean, when Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez won the election, I mean, every, you know, all of the mainstream media was just, it just, you know, went crazy because it was huge. And Ben Shapiro wanted to do a debate with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Now, this didn't make any sense because it's really honestly unprecedented for a debate to happen with a nominee for a representative seat or really any legislative seat uh, and or maybe even political seat to debate a pundit who is notoriously a sophist. Uh, but we'll leave that part out for this. And have a debate with someone on the other side of the aisle. I just, you know, you don't see Ted Cruz debating Anderson Cooper. You don't see, you know, uh, Mitch McConnell debating Ali Velshi. You just don't see it. It doesn't happen. It's not a thing. So it doesn't make any damn sense in the first place. But he was, you know, screaming up and down about he's offered 10 grand to her campaign if she actually does the debate, which again doesn't make sense. And he went all around and the conservatives followed suit because, you know, they're cowards like that. Uh, they all followed suit with this nonsense. And basically, Ben Shapiro got to run laps around saying, oh, she won't debate. She won't debate. I mean, Cenk Uger should invite Ted Cruz and Mitch McConnell to start doing debates, too. I mean, that's basically the same thing. But I want to show you guys what Ben Shapiro said, uh, inviting Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. The corollary of that is the Democrats, because they are so jazzed up, could move radically to the left. And that means that their future is Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Now, yesterday I said that Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is not the brightest bulb in the basket. And I stand by that statement because she is not, in fact, the brightest bulb in the basket. Uh, she was on Pod Save America yesterday and she made a series of ridiculous, silly statements. She again is considered the future of the Democratic Party because she's an intersectional candidate. She is she's a, a person of, of great intersectional capacity. She's a woman and she is his, she's Latina. And that means that she has valuable things to say, even if she is just saying random stuff all the time that doesn't make any sense. Well, yesterday on Pod Save America, she was asked a series of kiss sessions and she proceeded to immediately blow them sky high because she can't even answer those questions properly. By the way, you know, there, I, I've received a lot of emails. Would I debate Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez? I would pay money to Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez's campaign to debate Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez. I would pay her money to come on the Sunday special. I would give money to her campaign if it meant that she would actually come on the Sunday special and answer some serious questions from somebody on the other side of the aisle. But there's a reason that she's only existing in the safe space of Pod Save America, where they're just going to ask her questions like, Alexandra, where do you get that lipstick? Alexandra, how do you do your hair in the mornings? Alexandra, can you talk to us about how Republicans are mean and cruel? Yeah, it was really funny. This morning, she tweeted out, because there's a lot of blowback after her various interviews, she tweeted out, a, a bunch of uh, a, a bunch of things about how she, how the reason people are coming after her is because they're trying to distract from this burgeoning Republican scandal. There's a Republican representative who's now been arrested for some sort of bank fraud. Uh, he's a big early backer of, of President Trump's. And she says, the reason people are coming after me is specifically because they are trying to distract. She says, whenever the right is being particularly feisty towards me, the first thing I do is check to see which bad news of theirs they're trying to distract from. Lo and behold, and then she says, Representative Chris Collins of New York, 
Trump's earliest congressional backer, was arrested by the FBI on securities fraud related charges. Well, no, the reason that we focus on Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez is because the media have fallen in love with the lady who won 17,000 votes in a Democratic primary in New York, and we're all supposed to believe that she's the wave of the future. That's why we're paying attention. Also, because it's a lot of fun to pay attention to the dumb stuff she says, because if this is the future of the Democratic Party, the future is stupid. Hi, I really wanted to make just a direct appeal to Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez, the future of the Democratic Party, according to Tom Perez, head of the DNC. Ms. Ocasio-Cortez, I'm really excited that you've been elevated to that position, and I would love to have a real conversation with you about the issues. You've noted you think Republicans are afraid to debate you or talk to you or discuss the issues with you. Not only am I eager to discuss the issues with you, I'm willing to offer $10,000 to your campaign today for you to come on our Sunday special. We can have an hour-long conversation about all the topics under the sun, really probe your belief system. And frankly, if you want to raise charity and we'll do it as a debate, we can do that too. However you want to do it, I am more than willing to talk to you. I would love to have this conversation. So let's make this happen. Let's make America a more civil and interesting place. Let's do this. So considering two things, A, or one being that Ben Shapiro is the guy who I believe he said that he's down to debate like pretty much anybody, if I'm not mistaken. But what we definitely know is he's supposedly the facts over feelings guy. That's supposedly what Ben Shapiro is. He's supposedly the guy who is, you know, all about debating. You know, he wants to debate. The left can't debate. They always cower and they never offer to debate. And whenever they are offered to debate the lefties, they always decline. Uh, that's the first thing, right? But the second thing being the clip I just showed you and all of the news media going around when Ben Shapiro unprecedentedly invited Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez for a debate, um, which, again, is something that doesn't happen. You don't see Anderson Cooper debating Ted Cruz. You don't see Ali Velshi debating. It just doesn't happen. It's not a thing. It's weird. Um, but anyways, with both of those things combined, why is Ben Shapiro not debating Kyle Kalinske at Politicon? It doesn't make any sense. Especially when you add on to the fact that according to the Politicon website, as of right now, he's not actually doing any debates. He's not doing a debate. What he's doing is, is he's, he's doing his keynote speech, which is going to be massive cringe, of course. A Ben Shapiro speech, well, I guess that's a lot of speeches, but... His speeches and his Q&As are full of grandstanding and is really cringy to watch because if you watch them, someone will ask a question and he'll give a loaded answer that's meant to get the crowd excited. But anyways, uh, he's not actually scheduled to do a debate. He's not scheduled to do a debate. So how could you possibly, on the one hand, claim to be all about debating and to be all for debating and, you know, supposedly like the only guy who's actually debating, you know, like the left never debates. But when Kyle Kalinske from Secular Talk, and I, we don't even know the information about David Pakman and Sam Cedar yet. And as whenever that comes out, I mean, I'll be sure to talk about that. But we know about C Sam Cedar hinting at Steven Crowder and David Pakman heavily hinting that it wasn't just a few people who backed out, but a massive amount. I mean, as Kyle stated, he, he offered to debate... Um, Candace Owens, Tommy Lahren, and Ben Shapiro, all 1v1. Uh, they all declined. They all, all of them declined. All of those conservatives declined who supposedly claimed to be all about debate and different stuff like that. And this stuff like that. Uh, but I really wanted to highlight the... I mean, I don't really... It's just weird. You know what I mean? Like, how can you go around trying to debate Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and then be going on this sort of lap all around... Uh, when she doesn't do a debate because there's no reason for a Democratic nominee in a blue district to have a debate with a, a conservative who has bad intentions in terms of he wants to do a debate so he can quote-unquote destroy her and basically just... Uh, it's not actually good and well-intentioned. There's no good intentions in there. It's all about how... It's the same same thing Steven Crowder does. He's trying to set people up. Uh, that That is what he was effectively... That's what he was trying to do out and out. That, that was his goal. Uh, so it wouldn't make sense for him to do it. But why wouldn't you take a debate with Kyle from Secular Talk? Why not? I don't get it. You're not doing a debate at Politicon. You're doing... So far as we know, you're just giving your, you know, cringy speech, keynote speech 
and then you're doing a Q&A with all the Daily Wire lackeys, like you can, you should be able to do the debate. So I don't understand it. So basically, a lefty liberal says, I want to do a debate, offers it, not just to Ben Shapiro, we're talking Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens, Tommy Lahren, they all decline. I mean, like, what is that? What is that? That's some really cowardly, like, cowardly stuff right there. It's insane. It's hard to really explain and fathom because it's funny how the tides supposedly turn so quick because it, the the rhetoric essentially prior to this essentially was, you know, uh, there is the right wing who's all about debating and the lefties never show up. They're never actually down to debate. And it's always the right wingers trying to debate, but the lefties don't want to do it. But when Kyle says, I'll do a debate, you're not down. You're not actually down with it. You don't actually want to do it. So essentially, it's the phrase, you know, put up or shut up. Uh, they are not putting up. They're not being legit. Um, and Ben especially in this case. Definitely Ben especially because he's the notorious guy who's supposedly uh, all about debate. So, I mean, I want to hear an explanation for this stuff of what's of what has been going on with them. But it's just so, so hypocritical of Ben Shapiro to you know, invite Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to a debate, basically a setup, uh, to attempt to humiliate her and destroy her career, uh, and her image. And she declines because it doesn't make any sense for her to do this supposed debate in the first place. And you go all around and screaming about it. And then Fox News follow suit. And then all the other cringy conservative outlets like the blaze follow suit and other, you know, douchebags do the same thing. So it just, it's so unbelievably hypocritical and just, it's, it's so cowardly too. I mean, I know that I would, I was looking forward to a Kyle Ben debate and I 100% know that you guys were as well.